two, one. Do it. <laughs> and we're back <laughs> for the uh, most likely the last hour of week six of the Crimson Bow. Yeah. So. Ignoring the giant bomb that dropped on the other side of town, we move over to <laughs> Evan, currently moving up on the Inquisition office. Also, just so you know, that place where you read the notes, those are openly edible for all you guys to edit when you see fit. Yep. As you get there, uh, the current traffic there is to a minimum there's no like there's nobody that you saw coming in and out of the building when you came there like you saw a couple of venturing parties looking up the uh the post that Fernicus or Famicus did with red but no one seems to be taking anything it's just very docile currently over here i'm just going to go over knock on the door see if i'm allowed to enter yeah, the door is open. Yeah. I... Greetings. And as you do so, you see the um, tan-skinned, red-eyed, black-haired, familiar face of Red. As he turns his head up, you see he just gains a smile. It's like, ah, my friend, welcome. As he comes back from the other side of the island to go greet you. Greetings. Uh, I've run into a bit of a problem. A problem, you say? Well... Yes, as as you know, I came... I'm a spire child, as I was called earlier. Uh, when I came out, I was given a small handful of silver and spe used it to be trained in a relative skill that I felt a connection to. Mm -hmm. In doing so, though, I have very little equipment, and it is bothering me. I... I do not feel comfortable being as lightly armed as I am. It's a heavy crossbow, yes, but only fires so fast. I, where can I go to acquire something of a smaller caliber that I can maybe wield in a single hand? Hmm. Well. And more bolts. I am going to need more bolts. There was a man that came in that was a regent trader for a little town, though. I do believe that his caravan was assaulted by goblins a few days ago. Most of his goods were either apprehended or lost during that small skirmish. I do believe if there was anybody that would be able to help you, it would be him. I just thought that you being the quartermaster, you would... Quartermaster? Are you not? <laughs> no, no, my friend. All I do is watch over the Inquisition office during the day shift. Okay. I understand. Do you know about what he would possibly be charging so I know how much I'm not going to be able to afford it? Unfortunately, he hasn't made this an official mission with the Order yet. I do know right. that he was finding residence near the Harper Scroll, or in it, I believe. <sighs> I was just over there. Okay. I, I go speak to this man, see if I can make a deal. Uh, sorry for bothering you, Mr. <laughs> Red. <laughs> it's no bother at all. I enjoy speaking to all you people when you have the need to speak to me. <laughs> you people? Well, yes. What do you mean by you people? Spiralings. <laughs> Stay beautiful. I turn around <laughs> and I, and I start heading back over to the harp and scroll. <laughs> An hour. <laughs> Best part is, Jason had this information. <laughs> Did I? Yes. Is it the marquee? Yes. Alright. 
As I as I go though, I will take a look at the board and see if there's anything easy I I might be able to accomplish or convince uh, uh, Darren to accomplish with me to earn a few coin. The easiest thing on the board right now is a lost cat. All right, I'm gonna. So does it say about where the cat was lost or just missing cat? It's missing cat last seen on the outskirts of town. Alright, that cat's dead. Uh, <laughs> but I'll, I'll keep an eye out if we ever go back out into the valley. Granted, if you are going to take a mission, you would have to take it inside and officiate it, though. Oh, no, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'll worry about officiating it when I head back this way out of town. Okay. I'm not... I recognize that I'm going deeper in, so taking it, officiating it, and then turning left instead of right I get would you be awkward. But you take note of it. There's no guarantee it's going to still be there by the time you get back, but... I know. Yeah, You know it's there as you make your way back to the Harper Scroll. Outside of the Harper Scroll, currently the elven woman has actually turned her chair more to look at you directly, Darren, as you two have having this conversation, or have been having this conversation ongoing. It's like... Well, that's the main reason why I left him, because the man doesn't understand how to separate work from personal enjoyment. You know, that's a problem with us, man. Sometimes our work consumes us. It's tragic. I mean, even after I told him that I could have been with child, it just seems like he didn't care. You deserve okay. to be with someone who cares about you. What's her name? I'm sure I've gotten it at this point. Let's see. Her name is Ramilla. Ramilla? Yes. I met the side characters. <clears throat> what would you call her? What's her station? She. She a looks. Greeter? Like, yeah, just be a greeter for the Harper Scroll. Dolman? Or Dolman? And just assuming off of what you said before, you notice that the rat that you met in the hall looks to be following you. Congratulations, you found your animal companion. <laughs> <laughs> it, it shall be food for my actual companion. <laughs> um, okay, well... But, um... Well... I'm glad that I'm just out of it. I have a feeling that that relationship could have t quickly turned to something much worse. Well, good for you. Good for you, honey. I noticed that we spoke and... She looks, like, towards the sun. It's like, why? Has it almost been an hour? Wow, I guess it has. Time flies when you're having a good time. Am I right? Give me a charisma. Shit. <laughs> That's why you need your wing with cleric advantage. with you, man. <laughs> with advantage. With advantage? Yes. Fantastic. 18 ain't bad. Well. Yeah, that means you rolled a 19. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but as you uh, say that, uh, she just turns and just gives a smile looking at you and it's like I don't mean to be insensitive but why with the mask well I think it's better for everybody that I keep my face covered it looks like an, an avocado had sex with an older ugly avocado <laughs> <laughs> I could see no reason why Someone with a gentle soul as you would have to cover one's face. Let's just say not everybody that I've met has been so kind as you. He has super bad face herpes. All of them. All the herpes. <laughs> In all the wrong places. I hope that 
one day you give me the chance to make that opinion for myself. Maybe. If you play your cards right. <laughs> I'm winking under the mask, but you can't. <laughs> I say that to her. You ever it's already probably a slight her... helmet incline. You already gave her your name, right? Um, if I haven't, I'll just say my name is Darren Vega. Well, Darren, I warn you. And she says, raising her finger up in, in a flirtatious manner, she's like, I'm pretty good at cards. Mm. And around this time, you could see... Uh, Noted. <laughs> you could see Evan making his stride back over towards the Harper School. I'll just point at him like, look at this jackass. He's going to try this again. <sighs> oh, God. Don't Don't be too hard on him. Some people just need to get into. Some people just, uh, you know, they're not good enough with their words to get a lady the old-fashioned way. As as I walk up to it, I'm not gonna even go towards it. I'm just gonna go to the cabbage cart. <laughs> All right, so she looks at you expectingly as you walk right by them. Just not paying much. Imagine you're just walking like directly towards him in a 90 degree turn. <laughs> <laughs> she just has her mouth like half open, just like really looking at him when she crosses her arms over her chest. As the cabbage guy I... is just standing there looking like he's exhausted after standing for a straight hour. I, I walk up to him and I. I, I just address him. Sir, oh, earlier, oh. you said you had lost... Your stool had met, went missing. Yes, There's yes! One, I, I saw one over near the Inquisition house uh, in an alleyway. Come, I take you to it. Oh, good. Thank you. Oh, I thought I was going to get a cramp. <laughs> I walk him to the stool that I've had placed from someone else's cart. Another half an hour passed. <laughs> <laughs> so 15 minutes getting to there, then 15 minutes back. <laughs> but inside. Your pedometer's going fucking crazy on your hip, mate. Yeah. <laughs> you your daily workout. As you... I'm um, a ranger. I, I live in the forest. Walking is a thing we do. Ellis says... And you... also running. A lot of running. Especially from bears. Jason, there are a lot of bears. You are currently sitting at the other end of this table that currently seems to be quivering more after he put weight on it, but he doesn't seem to be paying much mind to it as he's just looking at you directly with his hands clasped um, in front of his face. So, you're willing to become my pupil. Why the sudden change of heart? I need to learn what priests can't teach me. I now don't become mistaken here. I serve Hieronymus. Hieronymus. <laughs> I can't pronounce his name, but he's my god. <laughs> and my actions will hopefully be looked well upon eventually. But I feel I need more than what the temple can teach me. He leans back after you hear a uh, sound of like, like a thank God kind of a noise coming from underneath it. There are invisible imps holding up the table. <laughs> All right. I'll train you in one condition. Name it. You do one favor for me first. To test Doesn't your the bottle count. No, no. The bottle was payment. This is a favor. All right. What's the favor? I kind of lean on the table a little bit. Actually putting weight against it? Yeah. So then you hear another 
sad whimper. Oh god! <laughs> I have a asset that is becoming a liability. I want you to handle them best you see fit. And afterwards, I'll judge your actions to see exactly if I'm... How you say... Accepting of them. This us at the rabbit girl? He just smiles. Follow the white when, rabbit. When I'm done, she'll willfully serve you. He would lean back, smirking, and then just wave you dismissively with his hand. She's in the third room to the sun top, towards the south. Yeah. I nod and head there. <laughs> Things are about to get dark. <laughs> Not in like I'm gonna beat her or rape her kind of way, but shit's gonna... I'm gonna destroy her emotionally. <laughs> So as you make your way up the stairs to the room that was stated, the third one to the south, it looks to be closed. I'll knock. The sound of rattling chains seems to emanate from the other side of the room. Or other side of the door. Let's go and put my head against the door. Are you busy? You shouldn't be here. I've been sent here. You hear the sound of the chains move again. Sent here. What did, you, did you sneak back in here? You need to leave. If he finds you. I said I'll save you before. I mean, I mean it. May I come in? I don't have much of a say on not letting you in currently. Yeah, I opened the door. She you open the door, you could see her tied by the neck, by this metal loop that's pinning her like neck against the wall. And then two chains that are wrapped against both wrists, pinning her against the wall, as it's only giving her free range of movement of her legs. She looks to be dressed in a dinged gown that has streamlines of what looks like wounds like cut into the ground itself and a discarded whip in the room yeah I kind of like, um, like walk in close the door gesture at a collar and say is that enchanted? will anything happen if I cut it? she would shake her head no and I go over and cut the collar so she can breathe or like move ahead a little bit her head slacks for a moment, but then she stiffens back up as she looks to you. It's like, you really came back for me? In the manner of speaking. I have to apologize. I failed. What, what do you mean? I won't be able to save you. No one will. Well, I'll adjust your arms. This is the best I'm afraid you're going to be able to get. Your master is too strong. The woman you spoke to before. I kind of shake my head, look down. She's looking at you intently. Like, again, like still shaking my head. I kind of just look, look, um, look back at her. Like I look completely defeated. Still, can't been looking like that for the past day and a half. But you just look and saying, the best life you can have is to serve willingly. Are you lying by chance? Because she's going to be inciting you. Um, not especially lying. I'm not going to save her. I doubt Yulia's going to be able to save her. Chances are she's going to keep on getting tortured if she doesn't serve willingly. Logically, this, like, servitude is the best thing she can do. She 
just drops her head slack and she just looks down at the ground as it looks like she's in a defeated position but her physical body seems to um, ignore what she verbally says as she spouts out no won't give in to him I will find my way out of here I will find my people she looks back at you and I will return just as I was when I left nothing more hey. nothing less didn't you tell me your people were dead they s you were sold from slaver to slaver do you think they're even left I won't give up I can't hope that they are there so you're giving up on the girls that are still here Use your strength, help them. Make this place did. better for her. This is a hell. Do you see me now? I was put this way just because one man was displeased of my service. I did nothing wrong. I kind of shrug. <laughs> It's not my place to pass judgment. And to tell you I failed, I can't save you. No one can. This is your life now. Then why come here to tell me this? Why not just let me think that you're already dead? Because I made you a promise. If I can't keep it, I should at least bear the consequences. And paid he did, you hear from around the corner, as you hear the sound of a slow clap. <laughs> you see my friend here, as she like turns her ears perk up as she looks like in horror. It's like, <laughs> yes, he can't help you for more than one reason, actually. One of them being, he says, moving up towards you, putting a hand on your shoulder. Because he works for me now. It's kind of low my head slightly. And she just has the look of, like, utter dis despair on her face. Like, she had a glimmer of hope that was there, and then just immediately got snuffed out. As... The man standing next to you just look at this with just absolute enjoyment like he's feeding off of it. It's like... So next time, if I hear any complaint about your service on anyone, it won't be me that has to deal with it. My friend here would see to it personally. Do you understand? You see streamlines of like, a mixture between crimson and like, iridescent liquid stream from her face as it drops to the ground as she doesn't say anything but just nods. Good girl. As he turns. Literally every fiber of my being is telling me to slit his throat. <laughs> just kill him. Just, literally, my, my, just back of my mind is just screaming, kill him, kill him, you <laughs> might have a shot. Going, you might crit him, you might be able to do it. Fuck him. As he moves his hand in a way to like try to move you with him. Yeah, I'll go with him. Come. I have many things I want to show you. You do well here. As you guys continue to walk towards the exit. As you can just hear the silent sounds of her sniffling from behind you. A little bad for a lot of gods. <laughs> uh... As you guys leave, it's close the door. Well, moving back outside. I actually need a minute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.
30 years. minutes have passed since you came back. Or no, 15 first. You bring him to the stool. Oh, this is, 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 well, this doesn't look like my stool. It is a stool. No? I, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. I mean, what? if your stool went missing, I mean, you need a replacement. You're right. It's not my fault somebody took my stool, right? There you go. Yeah. As he takes a stool, he's like, you know what? It it's obviously has no owner. It's in it's in an alleyway. You know what? Things are looking up for me today. Thank you, my friend. Of if course. you have any need of cabbages, you can come by and I can give you some at great prices. Luckily, I I like cabbage. He would smile. As you guys would make your way back to his cabbage stand. Meanwhile, back over there, you see this one shady looking guy looking at the empty cabbage stand. Or stand. It looks like he's like looking around back and forth before he eventually gets in front of it and starts to cart it away. I'm just gonna walk up. Be like, hey. Yeah, yeah. Uh, hey, what's up? Hey, you're uh, you're stealing a cabbage stand, buddy. <laughs> what? No, this is my uncle's. No, no, it isn't. Put it down. Go away. <sighs> Jerk. So he puts it down and starts to run off the corner. I'm gonna um, I did all that. I didn't. I didn't like run up to him. I just sort of stood up from the stool. Mm-hmm. And I'll, I'll turn back to Ramilla and say, well, Ramilla, it's been fun. Um, I guess the guy never showed up. Um, he normally so. is here around this time, if not a little bit later. I'm not too sure. I'm going to... Um, do you have a pen? I ask her. Well, a what? A quill? Yes. Do you have something I can write down some information? Uh, if it's not too much, she says as she delicately rolls up her sleeve and just extends her um, inside of her wrist. Of course she does. Um, I'm going to go ahead and write my name um, and then uh, my address. Which is nothing. The Emerald uh, Wang. Room yeah. 23. Essentially that, yeah. I'll write that. It'll be like, um, if you ever need to find me for any reason, you can find me here. And also, uh, you can also forward this information to your uh, employer. But be sure to keep it for yourself as well. Give me one more charisma. Jesus. Darren Do wants a... to bang. Do Still I have advantage vantage? on this one? Yes. Yeah. I'll be sure to do so. I'll be hearing from you soon. All right, I'm gonna take the stool and put it back next to the stand. <laughs> <laughs> this poor man. Oh, he already had his cabbage stand destroyed the first two episodes. <laughs> My cabbages. So uh, you go over and put this, this stool back as uh, Ramil is just kind of watching you with a newfound appreciation for your kinship. Mm -hmm. I'm actually going to queue up in the cabbage line, too, and sort of wait for everybody there. Just for a moment. So about five or ten minutes pass as... Uh, Good old Mr. Evan makes his way back with the cabbage stand odor, holding a new stool. It's like, you know what? I don't need that other stool. This one's better. Uh, when You're they, right. When they get there, I kind of want to um, say, Hey, uh, this guy came by. He was carrying a stool, and uh, he was going to take your cabbage stand, so I stopped him. So... Give no me, worries. Give me a deception. Well, I did stop him from stealing the stool. Oh, you did. I mean, the, the stand. 
Yeah, but you are and the guy did come by carrying the stool. It was, but you know, it was him. The dirty thief. Did you catch his face or name? I'll describe what the guy looked like. I didn't catch his name though. He's a young, just a kid. He said it was your nephew or something that you were his uncle. I have no children. At least not here. Do your brother or sister have children? No, all my family's in the West Bay. Ah, well then he was probably just a thief. Well, I thank you for that. No problem. As he looks at the stool, looks at the stool in his hand, it's like... Oh. Well then, that's a problem. <laughs> looks like you've doubled your seating arrangements, pal. Good job. <laughs> I guess. I guess now you have one for each cheek. Is <gasps> he just like, like <laughs> he gets the stools together? It's like, oh my gosh, it's like a portable bench. Have a good day, sir. Thank you, thank you. As as I walk away, if Darren comes with me, I'm just gonna turn to him and say, "So, are we getting into the brothel or no?" Where are you walking? I'm I'm just I'm going to walk away from the stand just a little bit away. Okay. I'm going to walk far enough away from you that Ramilla can't see me um uh, associating with me. Yeah. And uh I'll just which makes it easy with me wearing a mask and I'll just say nope. I mean, I could probably get in, but you're not getting in. And I don't I would have to do a little bit more groundwork to try and do that. But she seems like a nice lady. I don't want to do anything. As right. you're saying this, you turn back looking at her as you say, she seems like a nice lady. You see a man clad in, like, rather nice looking armor. It has a black, like, primary and a gold secondary lining color and has a red cape to it. He looks to be human with white hair but young expression. They're like young features. Okay. Looking down, talking to Ramilla. And she like has her like sleeve on their sleeve down and like looking to be showing it to him while talking to him. Cool. I wanna <laughs> I'll turn to um I'll turn to Evan and say, give me one second. And I wanna try and actually sort of sneak attack like tap on the shoulder like I'm not gonna I'm not trying to I just want to like you want it to startle him no, not even death. startle him I just want to show him how sneaky I am give me a just uh, 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 words give me a stealth see if you can get past this <laughs> dad that gets past his passive <laughs> yeah so I just want to walk up and tap him on the shoulder tough 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 even though or no, wait, wait. What would be cooler? Would that be cooler or say something cool and thieves can't? Nah, tap, tapping's fine. Tap As out. you type, tap him on the shoulder, you feel like he didn't even knew your, know your presence was there, but at the same time, after you do so, it doesn't seem like he's all that surprised. As he just turns his head, yes? Um... Damn, I didn't think about this part. <laughs> I didn't think I was gonna. Didn't expect to get this far. Yeah, I didn't. Uh, I didn't expect to be sneaky enough. Well, I'll just say, um. Hmm. I see. He whips his cape around as he turns around, full face, facing towards you. Um, I trust. And it actually looking. looks like he's a paladin of Heranimus. Okay. Mm. Um. Ooh. <laughs> I don't recognize him. No. Hieronymus or Hieronius? Hieronius, thank you. I'll just say, uh, in Thieves' Camp, I'll say, um, did Romilla give you my information? He seems to be looking at you blankly. What about Romilla? Hmm. Would he have been able, w without speaking Thieves' Camp, would he be able to, um, discern that as her name 
I mean, unless you would just go out a separate way of not saying her name, her name would be the only thing really that would pop out in it. It's a proper noun. Yeah. I'll, um, then I'll just say, um, excuse me, I think I might have the wrong guy. <laughs> no, I don't want to say that. Hang on. Give me a minute. Give me a minute. Uh, no. Um, and I don't know who this guy is. I wouldn't have seen posters of his badassery anywhere. No, it doesn't seem like it. Though you could okay. tell that by his like garb and dress, it looks like he's well traveled. Hmm. Hmm. I'll just sort of look down at Ramilla and see what her as she has her hand up like on the side of her face, like blocking her hand as she's pointing her finger towards him and then mouthing, That's the guy. Oh. Okay. Um, I'll just say, um, uh, I'll just say, sorry, this is taking me forever. It's I'll okay. say, um, you said he's wearing like black armor. Primary black, secondary gold. With a red. It's got gold, tr gold trim, black, um, black armor. Probably got it from Longbridge. No. Okay, I'll say. Um, and a symbol of uh, her, Herenius. It's mighty grave to be wearing black, in the service of Heronius, isn't it? I wear these colors to reflect my duty towards him. After leaving the Ashen Plains. Excuse me, but do I know you? Uh, not yet, but I think it's of grave importance that you do. Or at least that I would know you. Grave. Would you like to speak in private, he says to you. I'm going to give another look to Ramilla, like... Does it seem like it's going well? Sort of look. Which she wouldn't be able to tell because I'm wearing a mask. I'll just look over at She it. just gives you a just wink a and a thumbs up. Exactly. Yes, pri privacy would be good. I see what turns to the wall as he removes his gloves and puts a hand on it as he then puts it down and gestures you to go in as he puts his glove back on. I do, bowing to Ramilla as I go in, till we meet again, and then I'll walk right in. As you walk in, there's a residual feel of um, resistance as you first hit it, like you're walking through sand almost, but... I, I gag. Yeah. <laughs> as you make your way on the outside of the... inside of the wall, as it's a very well-decorated, furnished building with many love seats and mostly elven customers seemingly enjoying these women and men that are serving them on today's menu the men and women look to be ashen skin with these black wings protruding from their backs are near their abdomen or back of the gross not abdomen at not abdomen <laughs> from their backs gotcha as they look like they have a uh, Elven-like ears, but they don't look quite elven. Okay. One thing about them, though, is they are abnormally gorgeous. Beyond gorgeous, that you never expected to find something as beautiful as that. Beauty's in the eye of the beholder, but we'll continue. <laughs> After you came in, though, five seconds pass of you being on the side of the wall. As you're... On the inside, on the outside, what are you doing? I'm I'm gonna walk up to the woman. Well, before you do that, like, the man is still standing there as he turns and looks like he's saying something to her now, after uh, Darren went in. Is there any chance I can overhear what he's saying? Give me a perception. Okie dokie. 
pretty sub soon. All right. You spoke of him being a part of the grave, yet he doesn't hold any markings of one. Oh, I, I, I spoke to him for quite some time. We actually s stood out here speaking for about an hour or so, or half an hour. I do believe he's genuinely interested on in whatever we have to offer for him, and I suggested that he speak to you. Very well. As he says, as he turns his head and makes his way inside. Alright. I'll just step up to her, my head down, and I, I'm just going to say to her, Miss, I am sorry about the actions I took earlier. It was unright of me to do what I did. My name is not Yusuf. It is Evan. And the reason I am looking to enter this establishment is because... I have business to do with a merchant who came into town, and I, I have understanding that he is taking up lodging here. I am merely simply uh, looking to discuss business deals with him. I do not have a reservation, and I do not have money to bribe you to get in. I say this in the fullest of honesty. I simply need a few moments to speak with him, and then I will be out of your hair. As you come over here, like, she was looking towards the wall as the man went in, and you kind of just moved up to her, like, without her really noticing you. As she turns her head and gives you this dull look, waiting for you to finish. Is this some kind of joke? This... Unfortunately, it is not. I... I have only been in this area for a week or so and most of the time has been spent in the valley I have very little knowledge of the customs of these people and specifically the uh, goings on of how to enter a brothel did I, I'm, my apologies did Reger put you up to this? I, I do not know of this Gregor I, I do apologize She looks at you now, and, yeah, go ahead and give me your, uh, your persuasion. Look, you may have your reasons, but unless you have an invitation, or the proper amount to enter, I cannot let you in. She actually says this, like, clapping with every word that she says. If I my do apologies. that, it would get me in trouble with my job. My only purpose is to not let people like you in without a reservation or payment. Certainly. What process must I go through to get the res reservation? You would have to be recommended by a person that has already been to our establishment and put on a preferred list. Until then, All right. I cannot help My you. apologies, madam. I, I will not bother you anymore. And I turn around and I, I leave and I look like a dog with its tail between its legs. <laughs> I just walk away. Uh, I'm, I'm, going toward, I'm going towards the valley. All right. So, verbally defeated, you walk towards what's familiar, which is nature. As you spend another thirty minutes walking, <laughs> I mean, walk simulator twenty sixteen. I've got calisthenics down. <laughs> <sighs> so. Moving up towards the second floor, the door closes as the man and you, Jason, stand outside of it as he has his arms crossed and a smile on his face after removing it over your shoulder. Yeah, I look 
physically, like physically disgusted with what I've just done. Just like, look at him. Are you satisfied? He's just giving you the biggest shit-eating grin. It's like... <laughs> How does it feel knowing that your words have power, or hold power over others? Terrible, honestly. I killed a child today, and honestly, that made me feel worse. I say, like, gesturing at the door. Well, imagine if you were able to tell them exactly what they wanted to hear, and actually have the power to do what they want. To a degree, of course. Can you give me this power? I can train you in my art. Yes. And not. And say. In abyssal. No, not abyssal. Infernal. That I'm in your service. And let us make this a proper contract. Shit, I was hoping you won't, rec you won't recognize that language. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah, I was not defeated. Come. Let's go to the basement. I give him side eye. <laughs> Lead on. Don't worry, it's your first time. I'll be gentle. <sighs> Alright, so as you go back through the bead curtain, give me a perception. Sure. I'm actually decent at that, sort of. Actually, due to the full lack of people in here that are standing, you can have advantage, which doesn't matter. The low light is just obscuring your vision and all the attractive people kind of make you want, feel flustered to not look and hear much. A day I was a virtuous cleric. For all of like a day. I was, I was a good <laughs> man. So as you're just in here waiting for the other male to uh, make his way on the other side of the wall, you do notice Jason being escorted into the room through this beaded curtain and walk into another part of the establishment out of vision again by this man that looks to be just like the the epitome of bulky intimidating tall fair-skinned long-haired dude okay. Matter, your mic your mic I don't recognize that guy. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, you do recognize him. Oh, who is it? You recognize him simply because his mug is on a poster that's worth 90,000 gold. Okay. That is a mighty fine bounty. What's his name? Do I recall that information? He was only known as the ringleader. Okay. Hmm. I'm going to ask some questions for Jason. Do I recall that information? He was only known as the ringleader. Okay. Hmm. I'm gonna ask some questions for Jason. Okay. Um. Before you could even continue on with that thought, the man from behind you finally makes his way through the wall. Alright, I'll turn to him. I have a room that we can speak one-on-one. -on -one. Unless well. you wish to sample anything today. I'll turn to look at the beautiful 
weird demon ladies. And I'll say, no thank you. Just talking. He would nod as he would lead you into a room that's opposite to the direction that Jason went. Okay. Going in. Taking note of things around me, making sure if it's a trap, I don't want to be led into some sort of a trap. So I'll keep an eye out for those things. As you're walking through, there's like these love seat areas. You're going to walk past some bar that has a uh, elven girl looking to be working it. And to the left, it seems to be like a indoor jacuzzi-like area that people are enjoying. And then what you walk through is a silk like curtain that opens up into a circular room that has eight separate doors. He goes to the fourth door in this room. Okay. I will follow. Going into it, it is a furnished room, not as extravagant as it could be. It has a very nice looking bed and a love seat and a like a beauty area that has a container of water and whatnot as he would move over and take the seat in that broody area on um, beauty area and just flip it around and sit in it which leaves the love seat or the bed for you okay i'll stand all right you have my attention though i do know you're not one of the grave so tell me why you sought out me well i'd heard rumblings of the grave and i was curious as to what it takes to become a member. You wish recruitment? Not necessarily a recruitment. Um, but I'm open to it. I'm cautiously inquiring some information. How desperate are you? He says, cocking his head. At this point, it's almost like he took on the stance of this being an interview more so than a conversation. Mm -hmm. Desperation isn't in my wheelhouse. What drives you? Passion? And what of your passion? What of my passion? Is that what you said? Yes. <clears throat> what do you well, make with such passion? Make things happen. Give me an example of your skill. What are you good at? Um. Hmm. What's around the room? You said it's not, it's like a bedroom with like a. It's bedroom. a sex part. Yeah. <laughs> okay. It's a sex part. Um, There's probably mm -hmm. just random assortments of um, different usable equipment in the area for the means. Hmm. Um, is there like a mannequin? Yes. This is the special uh, midnight room that has all the extra furnishes. For people with that delight. Okay. Um, the delight to be watched without someone actually there watching. <laughs> I will. Mm. Don't fuck it up. I know. <laughs> Don't fuck it up. 
I guess I want to do... Okay, so you just said that there's a mannequin in the room as well as, you know, the rest of the... I'm, tr I'm trying to figure out what would be the most impressive. And I think I'll use my feet of tavern, bra tavern brawler. And turn something else into the room, into a deadly weapon. Alright, there is a long black... <laughs> Cord like thing next to you. Is it a dildo? It's a dildo. I want to use the dildo as a weapon against the <laughs> um, against the mannequin. All right, go ahead and give me your thrown weapon. Or... <laughs> yeah, th I'm gonna throw it. Um, Don't miss. Okay, I'll try not to. Let's see. Just roll a d20 and you just put the pluses in after it. Gotcha. Throw that dildo. Um, I gotta move stuff around. d20, roll in. I really want you to crit this. Ah! Alright, so I rolled a 5. And I have proficiency with the dildos. Um, it's gonna be dex. Got plus 7 or something, one sec. I see, yeah, that's a... It's gonna be, yeah, well, no, wait, 7... Three, so that's three plus five. All right, so five, so it's ten, which All is right, just that enough. <laughs> All right, so now damage. What yeah, would you ahead. give? What would you give damage for a dildo? A one. One damage. Well, actually, and then, yeah, one. Um, and then so that'll be one plus my modifier then. Yes. So that's a since it was thrown, that's a three, so four damage. So yeah, it actually knocks the head off of the mannequin. So bad ass. Looks like your dildo's coming out his face like. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. I'm resourceful. I'll say that. Well then. That's interesting to say the least. Never had somebody display their that skills took with. so long. <laughs> oh, okay. So you're good at throwing things and not just weapons, alright. We could have use of more people like you. What is it that you do in the grave? I'm a regulator. I regulate those that come in and out of the member or the our association to make sure that I meant, I meant the association. Well that itself will be all dependent on what you will be selected on doing. Let's see. I would be regulating your missions to see what you would be put towards. Your pay. Who you interact and who you would be able to tell these informations to. And I'll also be watching you. Like a hawk. Got it. Do you understand this? I do. So your skills suits more of that of a, a striker, if anything could use more like you due to one of our strikers going missing recently hmm. how's the pay? <laughs> the pay is very nice if you do well so if you want more information, go to a man called Hargan. Hargan? Hargan. He's a baker. Where could I find him? Oh. A baker. Okay. Hargan the baker? Yes. Go there and speak with him. Did tell I ask him, him that... what his name is? Huh? Did I ask him what his name is? You did not. 
What do I call you? Just call me Scarlet. That's a girl's name. I'm not gonna say that. <laughs> because I'm a girl. It's a girl? Yes. You didn't say it was- alright. It's a very asked. manly girl. <laughs> sure said Jesus is Scarlet? Like that. <laughs> I'm Scarlet. <laughs> Remember long white hair but young expre um, expressions on his face? I just pictured it, dude. <laughs> yeah. So well, Scarlet check your male regulated. privilege then. <laughs> right. Go please. All right. So Scarlet the Regulator is sending me to talk to Hargan the Baker about the grave. So D and D. All right. I'll just say thank you. Tell him that the shadow will be coming every night to put those to rest. We should know what it means. I'm writing that down for a moment. The shadow will be coming every night to put those to rest? Yes. Mouthful. It's the password. Mm -hmm. I'll nod my head. Um, I'll say thank you. And then I'm leaving. Leaving, leaving? I'll bow, and I'll walk out of the room. Okay. She looks at you. Now that you now know it's a she. <laughs> gives you an, uh, nod. And waits for you to close the door. And she sp stays in there. Okay. Yeah, I'll just shut it behind me. And then I'm gonna go look for Jason. Oh my. So. Outside of the city now. 30 minutes later. <laughs> yes? You come across the edge of the city. There's two men on guard there. That looks to be a part of the constable's men. They're wearing this similar type of armor. Uh, they're not Afternoon. stopping you or anything. So, oh, hi there. Have a good day. Afternoon. Try to be safe out there. I shrug. Maybe I will, maybe I won't. After you pass by, you can hear them just talking, you see. See, that's why I don't talk to people, because they're assholes. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I mean, all I did was say hello there. I mean, I don't understand why. It's like, it's because people it's are It's not you, it's me. I've had a shit day. Uh, Apologies. Oh, they turn, it's like, oh. <laughs> the one guy kind of has, like, a blush coat over his face. Didn't realize you could still hear him. <laughs> uh, rats, is the rat still following me? Yes. Alright. Cool. Shoot it. Right now, it's your only friend. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm gonna go find a small clearing within the woods. Uh, that I called home for a week, and I'm just going to be like, I'm going to sit here with my thoughts. My party is a bunch of murder hobos, and <laughs> I can't get into a brothel. Like, brothels are supposed to be where desperate men go. I can't even get into that. I'm that, that, I'm that out of it. So I'm just going to go to this clearing, maybe chat with this rat. It kind of sits in front of you and gets on its hind legs, just looking up at you as you're saying all of this, as if it was having a conversation with you. Yep. You kind of rat chat. By the way, if we do level up and I get to get my pet, I'm definitely using this rat as the bait for my snake. <laughs> it might be difficult finding a snake around there. I mean, I'm in the forest. You're in a woodland. Or is it more of a forest? It's more of a valley with trees. You might want to find a bear everywhere. or a badger. Maybe a big well, I can't, I can't do a bear because the lowest one is a CR one half. Mm -hmm. Maybe a bull. So as you're talking to this 
rat. That seems to be nonsensical. Give me a perception. Certainly. Guys, I'm going to be rolling a new character for next week. I'm about to get ambushed in the forest. That displacer beast is coming out of nowhere like, yo! <laughs> Sup? As you are just sitting there, just spouting your travels towards this rat, you feel a presence over your shoulder? Hello? As you turn, as you see a uh, young looking child hanging upside down from a tree looking over your shoulder. Is it me you're looking for? I can see it in your eyes. I'm not sure if that's a frown or a smile. You're upside down. Hey, kid, what are you doing here? I'm just playing. What are you doing out here? Sulking. Huh. Oh, that sucks. He says as he yeah. flips off the tree and then lands on the ground after doing like three different spins and just a three-point landing. Nice. Acrobatic. As, as you notice, a uh, very appendage starts to come whipping out from his backside. Ah, oh, you have a tail. Oh, guys, I fucking say on. <laughs> oh, no. Hello. Did you come from the city? Not too many people leave there. I mean, I initially was in the city for only a matter of moments, and then I came out here, was trained by a ranger who lives out here, went back in for a matter of half a day, already being shunned by them. I, I might just stay out here. That well, doesn't help. Place, uh, place smells like death anyway. The city is death. You want to play tag? Sure. I tap his shoulder. You're it. As I run and I immediately uh, grab onto a low hanging branch and swing up into a tree acrobatically. He takes that initiative to do the same, climbing up the tree branch at first to get a higher angle and then starts chasing after you. Which, that's what leads into where it happens to your character. You go play with this monkey boy. Mm -hmm. Now, finally, for the last act of today, you make your way down, Jason, these corridor that goes straight into the ground with these lit candles on each side that spread out about 10 feet each candle as you notice that the lights begin to as you're making your way further down change from an orange tint to a red tint the further you go down this as I'm walking I'll just like pipe up and say so was I right are you a demon Some people call me that. <laughs> oh, am I about to sell my soul to a devil? <laughs> you wish you were so lucky. Devils are easier to control. <laughs> Let's not keep on walking. <laughs> the further you go down, like, remember when you've gone through the city, like, no matter where you are normally, you feel this residual presence of Heronius always, like, around you. Even though sometimes he might flicker with some of your acts, but normally he's always there. The further you go down, you feel like his reach and grasp around you is slowly being, like, sh taken away. Or pulled away from you. Um... I would like the candles on, like, sconces, like, yes. hanging off the walls. Yes. Yeah, like, as I feel, like, the effect fading, I'll just kind of take off my holy symbols, hang it on there, like, just give it a pat. I don't want to take 
something's wholly into a dark place. I'll be back for a Signifying the abandonment of higher And with that, that's this ends week of this episode, because that is perfect. As right. you just put the necklace on the, the candle holder as... You look at it for a moment as it's swinging there, as it looks like it's swinging towards you, as you reach out and just grip your fist as you turn and walk into the precipice of the darkness. No, I'll probably like grip it, like pull it like, close to my face and say, I'll be back for you, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> You're funny. <laughs> and with that, we'll call that a session. Cool. Can we finally get that sweet, sweet experience I've been so desperately craving? No, well, not you. One person can. Ugh. Yuli gets it. She actually has some downtime. <laughs> All the downtime. And Firmicus. Guess two. And Evan, technically, this is basically downtime, so... Yeah, I'm just playing tag. And Durin, you're currently just being able to sneak past people that not weren't actually paying attention. Follow this corridor heading down into the darkness as well. Mm-hmm. All right. I'll hold a stealth for you. <laughs> yeah, I see it. <laughs> Just in case. Very, very good. All right. So, thank you everyone for tuning in and watching the fifth installment of the Crimson Vow. Six. Six, not fifth. Yeah, we will be back next Wednesday at ten. Wednesday. Wednesday. I'm all over the place right now. Yeah, man, come on. Step your game up. Do, 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 and I'm back. So we will be back next Monday at 10.35 or 10.30 a.m. Up until around this time, which is 3.30 to 3.40 a.m. Or p.m., my fault. Man. <laughs> <laughs> all over the place. Hey, how about we go until 3.38 a.m., guys? Wait, I'm down. Uh, me, Let's do a minute. All right. My girlfriend would love that. <laughs> but thank you guys for watching. Um, we're about to cut off the feed for YouTube soon here, but we're probably going to stick around to talk with chat a little longer. Before that, anybody want to say anything for the end of the video? Yeah, thanks uh, Thanks for letting me join you guys. Uh, it, it was fun last week. It's fun broke up. Did he freeze? Uh oh. Uh oh. Oh no. Yes, Drexel, do your bidding. <laughs> <laughs> I guess what he's about to say is um, he also streams on Twitch, I believe. Um, he's posting some shit earlier. <laughs> but we just lost him. He's um, Phantom Bit. Ash, could you link that? Yes. He's Phantom Bit. Oh no. Yeah, it looks like he's having a little bit of issue. Yeah, he just posted in chat. Um, Phantom Bit, he does a lot of streaming. He's got like a really good setup. Great guy. Totally check him out. And there's what? his um, Twitch in the stream chat. Yeah, you can follow his Twitch there, and then you can follow his YouTube at the Phantom Bit as well and just keep track of all his videos and whatnot. He does a lot of D&D related games and much much more. He's an awesome guy. He's fun to <laughs> sit in the game and have me screw with like everyone else. But thank you guys for watching. We're gonna catch you guys up next week at the same time, same place. Check in tomorrow for Warhammer. Tomorrow, Warhammer Fantasy. Because. Hey boy. Warhammer Fantasy. Because I get to be French and gang raped by rats. And possibly die. We'll see. But thank you guys for watching. We'll catch you guys next week. Peace. See you. Later.